is up guys today we are out here for the official road impression for my 1993 Mazda FD3S RX-7 uh, those of you who have been following me you know that this road impression is actually quite a big deal because this is my absolute favorite car I've always loved the third generation RX-7s everything um, that's included in the entire package from the look of the car, the, the suspension design, and the handling dynamics. Um, it really is the most perfect car for me. So this car, um, if you haven't caught the, the, the general overview and introduction video for it, it's a 93. Uh, it has a street ported 13B REW. It's powered by a single turbo uh, Garrett 60-1 TO4S full three inch exhaust from the turbo back external wastegate that's rerouted into the downpipe v-mount intercooler setup coil radiator all supporting fueling and cooling mods dual oil coolers uh, the suspension setup is all poly bushings for everything brand new suspension hardware including mazda spherical pillow ball bushings um, team flex coilovers spring rates are 10 kg front 8 kg rear a racing beat big front sway bar and I'm running this on the uh, stock brake calipers with Hawk HP Plus pads in it. So cruising along here, it's a nice smooth road. The car is very stiff, so if we get a lot of camera shake, I apologize for that in advance. But man, squeezing on that third gear, just fucking rockets. Gets the dangerous speeds very quickly. Um, this car made 417 horsepower at the wheels. It is certainly no slouch at all. Oh man, I see him. If I was going to overtake this boat, but I see there's quite a few cars in front of it. So, given that, let's make best use of this downtime. And um, like I said, the car is very stiff. Um, I have everything poly. I made a mistake, and I. I, I I changed these two compliance bushings in the rear subframe to poly. I should have left them OEM. As a result, everything's very harsh. Uh, I do have those bushings. They are going in, but we are going to have to deal with a little bit of harshness here. Other than that, on smooth roads, the car is quite compliant. Uh, you don't really get any shock in the front suspension. It's only in the rear where those, where those two uh, bushings are that I replaced out. Steering feel is excellent. I love the FD's rack. Uh, this rack has been depowered, so it is manual now. But the uh, the actual uh, steering ratio, which I don't know what it is offhand, but there's a little bit of, it's just not as sharp as like, say like a Miata or an S2000 where the racks are very are very uh, quick and, and they turn immediately. There's a little bit more forgiveness. Now with that being said, there's no slop in the rack. Um, it does, the car does move when you turn the wheel, but it's just the steering ratio I think is perfectly suited to the car, especially making this much power. So correcting a slide or an oversteer situation, it, it's more relaxed and very easy to do. Um, there's not much for accoutrements in here. As you see, I have the radio removed. I don't have AC in this car any longer. Uh, there is a, that all contributes to reducing the overall weight of the car. It tips in at around 27 or 2670 on my scales um, but yeah I mean just the I love the dash of the FD it's very driver focused the uh, the center console here kind of tilts a little bit more towards the driver uh, the gauge faces are, are, are simple but they're elegant they have a nice uh, chrome trim ring around them I have my my water temperature oil temperature and oil pressure gauges mounted here in the center I, I prefer this over the pillar gauges so they don't obstruct view or get in the way um, it's just it's a lovely place to be. The plastics are a little bit dated for because they're an early 90s car, but I do have plans to kind of touch them up and, and rewrap everything with a nice leather to give it a little bit more elegance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit jabbing here and blabbing for a second and I'm going to rip through this section. It's the sun setting, it's a beautiful uh, evening. Temperature's in the 70s. Second gear, third gear. Woo! Heavy braking zone. Oh man. Fourth gear, 
I shift this car around 7,500 max RPM because that's kind of where power starts to fall back off. But uh, as you can see, like right there, I, I, I got the 7,000 in, in, in fourth gear and that just about maxed it out. For those of you who are familiar with FD's gearing, you know that that speed is quite quick. Um, <laughs> Overall, the way this transmission is geared with the 4.1 final drive and the 255 40 17 tires, fifth gear will max out somewhere around 192 miles an hour. Now, I've never been that fast and I don't really have any intentions to, but I would say with, at this power level, I probably have enough horsepower to, uh, to get there with enough straightaway. But uh, <laughs> anyways, back to the car. Um, I, I can't say, I can't go on and say enough about the handling dynamics of the FD. Uh, most of my cars are double A arm cars or double wishbone, however you want to say it. But I love double A arm cars, but I also kind of hate them at the same time. I love them because of their uh, agility and their sharp turning and the raw mechanical grip that they're capable of generating. But what I don't like about them is that when you when you get to those limits of grip, especially when you're running a grippier tire, is that when the when the rear breaks out, there's a little bit of spring and the double A arms and they and they get a little bit edgy and snappy. Now with that being said, it's not that I feel that the oversteer is uncontrollable. It's just that I like to like I don't want to saw at the wheel as much and be as frantic if I can help it. I like to just be able to kind of relax a little bit and let the car um, you know, and just kind of correct the car without being so like monkey armed, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But let's do a, let's do a launch here. I'm on a little bit of an uphill, so we'll do first gear. I don't launch this car very much, but I'm going to do it for you guys. A little bit of wheel spin there with that 255 section rear tire right up. Fourth gear. Just fucking rockets, triple digits. Woo! It's a fast car. I love this car because it's just like, it's everything raw and mechanical, but it's like, it's got so much performance that it, it, can, it, can, it can hold its own against modern performance cars, and it gets that wonderful driving bliss and everything accomplished, and it does it mechanically. Um, the beauty of Mazda's double A-arm suspension is they use these spherical pillow ball bushings in the rear that take out some of that load uh, when, you're, when you're cornering and you're bringing the car in the limit. They take out some of that springiness from the double A-arms. You combine that with a longer wheelbase versus like say S2000 and Miatas and you have a car that rotates a little bit more gracefully. It like dances and, it, and it's very communicative um, and it's not as edgy. But man, what a, what a fine machine it is. And uh, every time I drive this car, um, it gets my heart going. It, it's, it's, so, it, it's so fast that like, it never really gets boring to me. Like I'm used to the speed, but like when you're ripping it through the corners, it's, you have to be on top of your game and like really pay attention to what you're doing. It's a, it's a, it's a fantastic, engaging, lovely car. So fast. I don't know how this braking zone is going to be fourth gear. Oh yeah, a little bit of rotation under the brakes there. Woohoo! Fourth gear, oversteer on the brakes. What, a, what an exhilarating ride this is. And me being a pretty basic guy, I don't have any crazy aero. I'm not dealing with any of that stuff. It's just me and the car. Yeah, the 99 spec front with the front lip provides a little bit of stability at speed and you do get some frontal downforce from it, but it certainly doesn't, as you see, it certainly doesn't prevent oversteer at speed. Uh, there's nothing really pushing on the rear, but I will say, that the front the front bumper does provide a lot of stability at higher speeds and I like that. Um, I get asked I get asked a lot why I don't do big aero on any of my cars and it's and it's that reason right there. Um, I want to just be able to, you know, you utilize gears two, three, and four on the street all the time and 
I want to be able to enjoy the car. I want to be able to exploit it. The last thing I want is is just is having is introducing more understeer um, at speed. I like it when a car is playful. I love it when the rear end just kind of you know uh, yaws around and, and moves around a lot, and you and you're kind of balancing the whole act with your throttle foot, uh, your throttle foot, and the steering wheel. To me, that's that's what driving's all about. That's the experience that I, I chase after and I love. And I'm at the point in my life where I've done the max grip thing. Now I just chase the pleasure, the driving pleasure and that and that balance. What Sushia Kechi Sushia talks about all the time, it's that balance. And that's and that's really all that I care about at this point. I don't I don't need the fastest car anymore. This is plenty of performance. You know, if a, let's say a modern uh, 991 Porsche GT3 911 wants to play around a little bit, this car can hold its own. And I don't need any more aero and I don't need any more tire uh, to, to, to accomplish that. Going back to the uh, to the tires, uh, so like I said, these are a Kumo XS, they're 180 treadwear. Uh, they're, they're a few years old, so they have some heat cycles on them, but they're still um, gripping. Maybe a little bit too much in my opinion. I wouldn't mind a tire that allows for a little bit more slip, but it's 255. 4017 front and rear. These are mounted on Enki RPF ones in a in a 17 by nine and a half positive 38 offset front and rear. It's a square setup, uh, no stagger here. The car just behaves so well that it it, it just really doesn't need a stagger. Um, but yeah, this is a great car. The gearing I wouldn't mind a little bit shorter gearing. Um, and fifth gear cruise is fantastic. The rotary is very smooth. And I'm not at a high RPM, but even if I do cruise closer to like 35, 4,000 RPM, which I think is somewhere around like 85 or 90 miles an hour, and I don't typically cruise there, but the car is just very smooth and it's not it's not jarring. Um, I wouldn't mind having either a 4.3 or a 4.4 final drive just to kind of help uh, prevent falling out of boost out of some of those like tighter turns. As much as I love the rotary, this uh, but the downside of the 13B is just that when you're at the, when you're out of boost, you know the engine itself makes probably about 180 horsepower at the wheels. So you're you're talking a big substantial jump going to the 417 at max at, at peak power, and that's a big range of power to modulate. Um, on the contrary, though, because of the rotary's linear nature and power band, it makes that modulating that big range of horsepower much much easier, um, and it's definitely controllable. My other FD that I'm building, as you guys know, or may or may not know, um, I'm doing a all-motor three-rotor because I'm trying to find that balance. I think I can do close to this peak horsepower number with the right port design while keeping it still streetable. Um, but, I, but with the bigger uh, three-rotor and more displacement, I'm hoping to provide a little bit more down-end oomph. So if I want to be a yawbone and jab the gas and kind of pitch the car, I, I should be able to do so. But uh, yeah, man, I just, I love this car and I, um, I, I know I put off sharing this with you guys. I think it's just because it, it's, I, I guess I put it up on a pedestal. Uh, the, the car really is, it means so much to me. And I wanted, I wanted to like properly demonstrate why these are so wonderful to you and really trying to think about like how, what I was gonna say and what I was gonna do. Um, I guess that's kind of part of the reason why I put off making this video, but I'm so happy to share this with you, and I hope you guys are, are getting like just what makes these cars so special. I know there's a lot of taboos about rotaries, and yes, there's no de de denying it. They do have their quirks, and they do have their, their, their issues, but if you properly sort them out, and you properly build, and you properly tune them, they are just as reliable, and they're cheap to build. You can rebuild. These are a motor that don't require any machine work. You can rebuild them in your garage. I mean, they are just a fantastic platform, and it's it's why I, I, most of my cars now are rotary powered, and why I'm I'm kind of moving more in that direction is just because um, it's a it's a it's a small compact lightweight unit that's once it's sorted, it, it, it's it's a, it's pretty good, and it's hard to it's hard to argue the value per per dollar that you get out of one of these. So we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna wait till I get to another clearing here and uh, we'll be right back. All right guys, and we are back. Gonna put the car through its paces one more time over here. Gonna do a rollout in first gear. So here we go. 
Little wheel spin there. Puts power down in second. Over the bumps. Woo! To the floor and fourth. Building speed very quick. Woo! Little fireball at the back there. Car's moving around over these bumps. Woo! No ABS. Just fucking hustling through the corners here. Man, oh man, what a wild ride. <sighs> See, <laughs> I don't know, I can't, I can't ever chalk up in my head that I would need any more power in a, in a 2,600 pound rear wheel drive sports car like this for the street. Um, you, <laughs> the, you have to be on top of your game and boy oh boy, is it just like, it's fast. The, the performance of this car being a 90s car, it is, it is right up there. Chassis, yeah, it feels like an early 90s chassis. It's nowhere near as rigid as modern cars are, uh, and that's kind of to be expected. But uh, yeah, it, 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 the setup on this car right now, I'm very happy with. Uh, camber curves are pretty, pretty conservative, and uh, it just. The whole package just works tremendously well. I really, I really, really am happy with it. Gear shift, lovely. This is an REM MEA short shifter. Uh, stock is quite tall and quite long. Uh, this is just gives it a little bit more direct. This is actually a NB Miata shifter. I wonder if I'm like blowing up REM MEA here, but that's what their shifter is modeled after. They just changed like one of the bushings on it, but the shape of the shifter and the machining is identical to, a, to an NB Miata's, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. But uh, it, it really, from an aesthetics point, it put the gear lever right at, the, at a proper height, and it's, it's, it allows for smooth, direct, it's metal on metal, uh, feels really great in the hand, gear shifts, it just, it just works really well. Oh, it's getting dark out here, so I think I'm gonna end this review off about here guys thank you very much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this and i hope that this kind of gives you a little glimpse as to what the fd3s mazda rx7 is all about and i'm gonna take this turn here Woo! lovely just just absolutely lovely all right, guys, that's it for this one. Till next time, done.